What is the difference in noise performance when it comes to the Canon EOS M6 Mark II as well as the new Sony ZV-E10, AKA the ZV Echo 10? Hey guys, welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Bilal Khan, a marketer by profession, media by passion, coming at you from Space City, AKA Houston. In this video, I uh, basically wanna explore the performance in ISO noise, uh, the difference between the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, which I've been using for the better part of the last maybe almost two years, and recently acquired Sony ZV-E10, the Echo 10 uh, Sony, APS-C camera. When it comes to the dark space, how good does the noise perform? So we're gonna start this uh, comparison at ISO 400, shutter one over 30. So you'll notice there's gonna be a lot of crazy soap opera like motion blur uh, with the f-stop at 1.8. As I raise the ISO, we're gonna double it 400, 800, 1600 and so on. Uh, and I will be compensating the shutter speed as such. Pay attention to the shadows, pay attention to, uh, well, the dark black and the light black. Uh, pay attention to even the other colors, the skin tones. Let's bump this up to ISO 800. The exposure of this looks a little bit better, but um, this is still one over 30. Um, again, pay attention to skin tones, pay attention to the uh, lights and the darks. Um, I think it'll be fun to see also when I put this into HLG3 and then color grade it and see how that compares also with skin tones um, with a little bit of adjustment um, in comparison to the Canon. So again, uh, ISO 800, pay attention to the lights and darks. Uh, next, now I'm just gonna compensate by bumping up the shutter speed, right? Bam, a little bit overexposed. Uh, but then uh, if you are somebody of darker complexion and have insecurities because of colonial uh, conditioning, then this would be a good ISO setting to go to. But if you are more than happy with your complexion, then feel free to bump up the shutter speed to one over 100. Bam, and here we go. So now let's gonna, again, pay attention to noise and the, the light blacks and the dark blacks, skin tones and so on. Let's, uh, let's do this again, go to ISO 3200. Again, just look at the noise. The noise is gonna be related to where the ISO is at. So that's what we're looking at here. And I know Canon just in general tends to crush their blacks not, uh, uh, to begin with in camera. So although they might not apply noise reduction, I think they have the option for that, but I've disabled it. Uh, but they still crush the blacks to hide whatever noise that might exist. But then you can make it appear by raising the ISO again, to get more noise. Um, and then if I were to go to ISO one over, uh, shutter speed one over 250, this is your 120p slow motion, uh, a pro, uh, 180 degree almost shutter speed for your um, B-roll shots. Now you'll notice I got the staccato gladiatorial games of Gladiator uh, with Maximus swinging his sword or the Avengers in Infinity War. By the way, one over 250 is a good shutter speed if you're looking to do some visual, visual effects or even green screening because that allows you to avoid any issues in regards to keying uh, when it comes to the motion blur. So just an FYI, fun tidbit. Now let's go to ISO to it up a little bit more to ISO one over four, one over 500 for ISO 64. Cause in, in when I'm looking at the screen, this looks actually more appropriate. Um, and this could just could be the difference in the shutter performance, not shutter, the sensor performance. Now let's go to ISO uh, 12,800, super overexposed. And now bump up the shutter speed again, bam, here we are. Um, hopefully this is looking good. Now, the last bit is ISO uh, 12, uh, 12, 25,600, which is double that. Here we are. Pay attention to the noise in the lights, and the noise in the darks, and uh, we'll be comparing that against the Sony in standard picture profile. Uh, and one, th oh, just a, just a note, I have turned off noise reduction in camera, right? Uh, that's something that I don't like. Whenever the camera does the noise reduction, it just looks muddy. But I don't know, does this look muddy? Um, it's something that I'll probably see later in the uh, in the edit. Um, that was one of my issues with regards to the Sony A6400, although it's the same sensor as the 6400, 6600. 
um, just in a different body with slightly different software settings. You really, if you're on a crop sensor camera, you should not be going beyond this. Uh, but, oh, the other thing you'll notice is that the noise, whatever noise you do notice here is a finer detail. Uh, it's more grain, less, it, it's, it's a finer grain in comparison to the Canon because what this is doing is essentially it's taking a 6K image and squeezing it down, sampling, down sampling it to a uh, 4K uh, uh, picture. Uh, thus, all of the noise is gonna be uh, smaller, more fine. Whereas with the Canon, what it's doing is it's taking, I think, a 3K image or 3.5K image um, and it is uh, blowing it up to a, uh, <laughs> it's blowing it up to a 4K image. So therefore the noise grain is going to be less fine if that's the appropriate. Now let's jump this into HLG3. And here we are, we are HLG3. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do the uh, color grade. Um, so everything, what I'm gonna do, everything you're seeing from this point forward is graded HLG3. Here we are, ISO 400, one over 30 shutter speed at 1.8. Um, and then let's bring it up to ISO 800. Here we go, one over 50, bam, here we are. How's the autofocus? Autofocus is, it seems to be tracking me and it's actually really quiet too. Wow, it's actually uh, very quiet. Uh, it seemed louder when I was using it on uh, the A6400 with the same MC11 adapter. Interesting. So, uh... <laughs> all right, so let's bump into uh, ISO 1600. Boom, 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 1600 done. This is the exposure. Uh, with HLG3. So let's now bump it to ISO 3200. Bam. Uh, shutter speed, one over two, that's a, that's a F stop. And one over 200, let's go one over 250. Well, it's a little bit darker, I guess. Uh, maybe it was one over 200, I'm not sure. I think it's one over 250. Again, I laid the shutter speed down. Uh, I hope I'm getting it right. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I'm getting it wrong, I'm not gonna do this again. Uh, this is, I'm trying to see for myself and perhaps y'all be able to benefit. Uh, ISO 3200, now let's bump it up to ISO 6400, boom, done. And then bump up the shutter speed again to one over 500, bam, there we are. Now, one thing to notice though, in fact, I would believe is it would be appropriate to overexpose this a little bit. So if we were to bring this back down to one over 250, right? At ISO 6400, then if I were to grade it, this would be the approach, this would be uh, extra, it would be okay. You can over, my assumption is that you can overexpose HLG3 a little bit while recovering that data um, uh, so that you can get brighter shadows that you can then crush to reduce the noise without having to do any noise reduction. We'll see if this uh, theory stands true. So let's go to ISO 12,800. This is one over 250, right? Now let's go ahead and uh, bring the exposure down by uh, bumping up that shutter speed to one over uh, 500, right? That's one over 640. The controls on this camera is, takes a little bit getting used to because I've been on, uh, I got used to my Canon again. Um, so one over 500, right? And then let's bump up the ISO to 12, 25,600 to one over 1,000, right? And boom. And then if I were to grade this, does that, how does that look? Um, so that concludes our test, Sony ZV-E10. Um, and for reference, uh, the camera, the main camera that I'm also capturing stuff on, I have a, a Sony XD cam one inch sensor over here as well as over here, the wide angle. And I'm recording with my GH5 um, in terms of the medium shot that we've got over here. Uh, Cause essentially I've, I've been using these XD cams for almost, uh, I think just over six years, uh, the one inch sensors, super reliable, super good. But the issue that comes into play is whenever I'm dealing with black background like this, uh, I'm fighting with the noise a lot and I'm able to get rid of it, whether it be through noise reduction or whatnot, but that just essentially increases the render time. And when you're dealing with seminars that are going at like 16 plus hours at a time when it comes to the producing and editing and post-production, for that reason, uh, I decided to uh, go ahead and trade in one of those XD cams 
for a Sony ZV-E10 with a bunch of accessories, I feel like I would be better served with a larger sensor camera. Thus, here comes the ZV-E10. Tell me what you think, how did it perform um, in relation to uh, the Canon? If you have any questions, anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you soon.